Hi everybody, it is Wednesday the 13th of January and we are ready for the next chapter of Witch Wars. So we are now on to chapter 8 which is called Inside Brews. Linden House grew darker and the huge chandeliers that hung low from the ceilings flickered into life as Tiga stepped out onto the bustling street. The air was warm and all along the road little lanterns floated about next to the towering buildings. Glamorous chattering witches glided past and the little cafes that lined the streets were full to the brim with witches eating and laughing and a witch who had just fallen off of her chair. The one thing Tiga had really wanted to do since hearing about it was to see inside Bruce. She clutched Peggy's arm and grinned. Don't get excited, Fluffinora said. It's nothing special. She climbed the white marble steps and slotted a little black key into the lock. When the door swung open, Tiga's mouth swung open too. Baroos was huge. It was sparkly. It looked like an elephant-sized Fran had exploded in there. It was fabulous. Fluffinora glided on ahead past hundreds of little witches dressed in black dresses. They're stocking the shelves for tomorrow, she called back. Only I'm allowed in here this late at night. To the left was a huge wall of shelves lined with beautiful shoes and over in the opposite corner was a group of witches laying out silky gloves. An old witch with a beehive of white hair was climbing a ladder on the far wall, throwing scarves down to a group of young witches wearing puffy little skirts. A tall spindly witch sailed past Tiga on a cart filled with wide-brimmed hats. She waved as she passed. Fluffinora ran along the rails of clothes, throwing dresses into the arms of one of the assistants. Don't forget to put the new umbrellas out, someone cried from behind Tiga. We have some special customers from Brollywood visiting tomorrow. Will someone unpack the crystal handbags? shouted another. Tiga turned to find Fluffinora standing right behind her, holding a beautiful black lace dress. Next to her stood an assistant. Well... Tiga thought it was an assistant because she could see some little legs sticking out from under the huge pile of fancy fabric. Yes, I think this is the one. Come on, Fluffinora said, holding up the dress. So, you don't want any of these, no? came a voice from under the pile. The little legs wobbled. Nah, Fluffinora said, leading Tiga towards the changing rooms. Tiga looked back and saw the little legs buckle and all the dresses land in a heap on the floor. Peggy, go and pick a hat, said Fluffinora, taking the black lace frock off the hanger. Peggy nearly choked. A hat? I thought you were just saying that so Fran would let me go with you. I never just say anything. Go and pick one. Take any one you like. Peggy started making a weird noise. It went something like, Oh! And then she bounded off towards the hat department. Tika was thinking how nice Fluffinora was as the witch zipped up the dress and yanked it and pulled it. Perfect, she said, spinning Tika round to face the mirror. Tika almost didn't recognise herself. She smoothed the layers of lace on the skirt. And now all you need is, Fluffinora began, a hat, Peggy cried, sliding over to Tika and slapping a huge wide-brimmed hat on her head. Peggy was still wearing her old hat. You didn't find a hat? Fluffinora asked. Peggy shook her head. They're all lovely. The best hats I've ever seen. This one I'm wearing, I think, has bugs living in it. But my gran gave it to me and it feels a bit special. So I might just stick with this one. Fluffinora smiled at her. What are you doing? Came a voice behind them. Tiga spun round. The voice belonged to an older witch wearing a long polka dot dress. She teamed it with a slouchy back cardigan and a massive pair of earrings. Her hair was twisted into a loose bun and secured with a paintbrush. Oh, hi mum. Just getting some clothes for my witch wars friends, Fluffinora said. Tiga pulled the hat off her head and hid it behind her back. Of course, dear, Fluffinora's mum said, smiling at Tiga. You'll need shoes too. She picked some black ones with little pearls and big white and grey stripes on the heels and passed them to Tiga. Thank you, Tiga gushed. You're Tiga from above the pipes, aren't you? I'm Mrs Brew. Tiga smiled and almost bowed, but decided against it. 
Well, this must be quite a shock, Mrs. Brew said. I hear it's very different up there. I hope you're enjoying it in Ritzy City. She is, Mum, Fluffinora huffed. You can take a crystal handbag too if you want, Tiga. I designed those. Ah, Peggy said, looking worried. About them. You see, in my excitement to get to the hats, I, I'm so sorry, but I might have broken a few of those. And by a few, I mean somewhere in the region of 20. She pulled a sort of oops face. Mrs. Brew, much to Tiga's relief, laughed. Why don't you all go to Clutterbucks, Mrs. Brew suggested. What's Clutterbucks? Tiga and Peggy said at the same time. Fluff and Nora and Mrs. Brew smiled at each other. Clutterbucks it is, said Fluff and Nora. But first, Tiga, could I try on your jeans? And that's the end of chapter eight. And chapter nine, you might have guessed already, is called Clutterbucks. So we'll find out tomorrow what exactly Clutterbucks is. Bye everyone.